If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon, and so many more places. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And best of all, it's totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello again and welcome to another episode of Real Talk with RJ. If this is your first time listening, please don't forget to like and subscribe and follow so you know exactly when we release brand new episodes. Also, don't forget to share. If you like what you hear, make sure you share it with everyone you know. For this episode, we're going to be talking about what happened to our men and women. It's really interesting with the the chasm, if you will, that has occurred between the quality of men and the quality of women. When I was growing up, men knew how to use a hammer. Men knew how to check oil. You didn't have to be a mechanic, but you knew basic survival things of maintaining a vehicle. You knew how to use tools. Even if you didn't have a father, you learn how to use tools because boys work with their hands. Boys knew how to mow a lawn. Boys grew up kind of husky. Boys didn't grow up, you know, very skinny and scrawny. Boys had muscle because they had to do chores. They had to go outside. They had to mow the lawn. They had to trim the, the trees. They had to go climb on the roof and clean out the gutters in the house. They had to go wash the car. They learned how to wash the car. Otherwise, they washed it 15 different times. They had strong legs because they rode bikes. You know, they uh, they had to go out and do a paper route to learn how to work. They had good work ethics. Boys were tough. You know, boys fought when they got bullied for the most part. You know, they, they fought back. They stood up for themselves. And the women that married those boys were actually pretty safe for the most part. You know, aside for the exceptions of those who had, you know, cases of domestic violence, you know, that's that's always a factor i mean it's not the majority but it's always a factor that that happens at at some point in time for various uh ingredients if you will to that person's character um but the focus is that if somebody were to try to break into those houses when those men who were once those boys lived those those men would run up jump up and defend their family even to death you know they were tough these days you look at your average guy and it's just like they're scrawny they they don't even look like they can beat their, their shadow up you know they're they're so quick to complain about things when things aren't right but they won't actually do anything to to right the wrong other than write a letter or complain they won't actually go to get a law change they won't actually fight for what they believe in you know and we like we all see it people are super invincible and tough and mighty when they're behind social media making all these really disrespectful posts and um but they would never say that to your face a lot of these people would never say that to your face they would just say it because they're behind the safety of their, their computer or, or their their cell phone and i'm not saying i advocate you know beating people up for saying what they're saying but i'm just saying that people are brave now because there's no consequences When I was growing up, if you said the wrong thing to the wrong person, you got popped in the mouth, if you're lucky. You know, that's just kind of what happens. And the the, the rules of the street is if you don't want somebody to ever hear something, don't say it. Because if you say it to one person, there's a chance that it will come around and then reach that person you didn't want to hear it. And then that person's going to come confront you. So best thing to do is if you don't want somebody to hear something, don't say it at all. Because, you know, every secret that gets blown out of proportion always starts out please don't tell anybody and they're like yeah don't worry i won't but those those were the 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 quality of boys back then you know boys were tough they were strong and also they were gentlemen that and that was you know the norm when boys had fathers you know these boys had fathers and those fathers taught them you go and you you ask your and also they had a mother that was there to nurture them so they had these different qualities they had a father and a mother for the most part and they had these qualities there that taught boys how to respect women. It's not about sleeping with a ton of different women. It's about just being with one. It's about meeting that one. The, the quality of marriage had a whole different meaning. 
marriage was for eternity it was till you know like forever now these days marriage is until it gets hard so even when you get the generic in good and bad and in sickness and in health for if a richer or for poor like those parts of the vows just get thrown out the window as soon as they get married you're like they're already planning for divorce like oh we're doing a prenup like you're already planning for divorce that's crazy what's the point of getting married to somebody if you're if you're already planning for divorce maybe you're looking at these things for the wrong reason are you really getting married to this person just because you're gorgeous to look at that's not enough now these boys are entitled these these boys are scrawny they don't have a backbone in their in their bodies they will claim bullying they'll they'll stand up and fight for somebody that they, when they have a lot of other people with them you know the, uh, as i like to say they grow a pair when they're around a ton of people but when they're by themselves you can't get a word out of them they won't say anything or else they'll make a big scene and then pull out their phone and pretend that they actually care about the the movement that's going on but the quality of man is so much different than it ever has been in the history of the world boys don't have work ethics you're seeing more and more teenage boys that are that won't work their fathers will say hey come out here and help me out with this and then they'll complain they won't do anything and the fathers don't do anything as a result of it they just go back in the house and just give me your phone and that's it if my mom told me to do something when I was growing up, and if I gave her any lip, I get my lip popped. And for those few of you who don't know what that means, that means I get a backhand in my mouth. My mom didn't play with that. There was no back talk. If she said do something, the only option was to do it. There was no, I'll do it later. I don't feel like it. Why? None of that was part of my life growing up. And my mom is the, the number one woman I respect with all my heart aside from my fiance. And it's just really interesting because my mom taught me largely how to be a man and that's a miracle because there's so much that a woman cannot teach a boy it's just that's just a fact you know as i've said before no matter how many books i read no matter how many women i talk to if i have a daughter i could never relate with her about having a menstrual cycle or what it's like to have breasts or what it's like to feel turned on as a woman because i could never understand that now I could relate with my son and tell him what it's like to, to be turned on and you know what it's like to have a penis or what it's like to have an erective penis. So like I could relate with him on those things because I understand the feeling he has. So there's certain things that boys can only learn from men and there's certain things that women can only learn from, uh, from girls can only learn from women, which is why the two are supposed to work together. But unfortunately in these days, we don't see that anymore. We don't really see a lot of men and women working together. And I started thinking like, what happened? When did this, when did this start happening? Well, in the black community, if you like, if you really want to look at the history of the situation, if you look in the black community, um, boys weren't really, besides the civil rights activists and stuff like that, black boys weren't really going to jail like they are in this rate. And one of the reasons why is because the black father back in like the twenties, thirties, forties, like the black father was actually in the household. He was part of the family. He was there raising children to be a man, work ethic, etc. But when the welfare program was created, it actually incentivized women to not be married. And women were starting to say like, oh man, I, I can be, I don't have to be under the, the control of, of a man. I can have my own life and I can you know, support myself and provide for myself. But the catch is I don't need to be married. So then they stopped being married. Then they started going on this welfare program. And then all of a sudden, all these fathers have no place in the home. So they're out there, you know, getting drunk and going out and partying. And then all of a sudden, they start getting arrested more. Now there's all these boys growing up without fathers. So what do they do? They want that male accepting. They want to prove themselves. So they end up getting with their buddies who have the same situation, which is the creation of gangs. Gangs start forming around us because they start being bad, hardcore, trying to prove themselves as a man thing is that the streets don't teach you how to be a man i know because i've lived in them. i've been there you don't learn how to be a man you learn how to be a hoodlum that's just a reality you can only learn to be a man from men you can get qualities that are in, uh, that are instrumental to manhood from women but a lot of the women in these days in this generation 
they don't know what those qualities are anymore because both men and women in today's society are so freaking entitled. There's no sense of service to them. The work ethic sucks. And what, like the thing that's happening is that you have all these women out there that are um, that are saying, I'm independent. I don't need a man. I don't care about a man. I don't want a man. What's a man going to do with me? And then they feel that they are the prize. They feel that a man will be lucky to have them. But when you start sitting there and think, what is it that these types of women bring to the table? More often than not, they are just a pretty face. They don't bring anything else to the table. This man, if this man that they're, they're going for is a man who has his own place, he's independent, he provides for himself, he pays his own bills, he has his own job, uh, he is managing debt very responsibly, and then he gets with her and she moves in with him. Essentially, she is his dependent. She is a mouth that he feeds. And more. this is the sad thing, that it's common now for women to you know take advantage of that that privilege of having a man that's willing to work for you provide for you and then when he comes home she has not cooked anything for him now this is the, the scenario of this situation is a woman who is a stay-at-home wife but she's not cleaning up the house she'd rather get a maid she's not cooking she'd rather go out to eat or have a chef so she is just sitting there being a leech she is a parasite and then you also have men that live at home with their mom. They refuse to go out and actually be independent. And they think that they're going to get some bad looking woman just because they're a cute face. I'm telling you that right now, good men and good women are not going to settle for someone like that. Because that is not beauty. I used to think so. I used to think that a beautiful face was beautiful. I used to think that beauty had everything to do with how a girl looks, how she dresses, all that. <laughs> When I grew up and I matured, I learned beauty, true beauty, not just beauty, but true beauty has very little to do with the external appearance. Internal beauty is what true beauty is. That's what makes you fall in love. The character, the loyalty. Now, scenario A, both male and female are working. Doesn't matter who's making more money. The fact is, is that neither one should act like they're in more control because they make more money. If both are contributing equally, and it doesn't mean financially, like you cannot take uh, the financial differences, uh, or excuse me, financial contributions, you can't take those and determine equality based off of that alone, unless you're both making the exact same amount. Because you can contribute equally without making the same amount of money because there's a lot more than just money in a relationship. So if you're both working and you're both contributing as much as you can from that, uh, that, um, that financial contribution and you're both cooking, you're both cleaning, you're both taking care of the, the yard work, you're both a team, you are equally contributing. If you are uh, primarily stay at home, then the proper response would be, or excuse me, if the woman is properly, or, or um, excuse me, uh, primarily a stay-at-home uh, wife or girlfriend or whatnot, then she should be doing majority of the cooking. She should be, like, carrying her weight by serving and taking care of her, her partner. She should be cleaning. If she's not working, her work is in the house. She needs to continue to, that's what the term homemaker comes from. She needs to make the house a home. You know, it's not just her job to be doing this, but it's primarily her responsibility. Again, not just her job. It's primarily her job because she's a stay at home. This is primarily her responsibility. But that does not alleviate the man from when he comes home from work that he just gets to sit on his butt for the rest of the evening. No, he also has responsibilities. If his wife clean, uh, cooked the dinner, he needs to get in there and wash some plates. He needs to get in there and clean the dishes, help her out with the laundry. You know, if there's any laundry in the evening, um, he needs to do his part too to continue to making the house a home. But he should not have all that weight on his shoulders because there's an increasing level of men that are working and providing. And then when they come home, they also have to cook and clean because a woman thinks that she's a queen and she's just gonna sit on her butt and wreak all the benefits. I'm gonna tell you, those kind of women are gonna be the ones that get the, the rude awakening one day. Because when you oppress 
a people or a group of people for so long, at some point they're going to have enough and they're going to fight back. And that's what you're actually seeing these days. You're seeing a lot of pro male um, uh, media out there that's actually telling men to wake up. And a lot of guys are starting to wake up and go, oh, wait, you mean I don't have to settle? You mean I, I do have rights? I, I do have privileges? You know, you hear all these feminists out there right now or people who call themselves feminists talking about they want to be treated equal, but they're not fighting for equality. They're falling for they're fighting for superiority. And the fact is, is that the courts, especially in the state of California, family courts in any state, for the most part, uh, like they favor the mother, they favor the wife. There are so many men out there who have been screwed over by, you know, having like being good workers and being good men. And I'm not saying this is a majority and I'm not saying it's the minority because I haven't looked at the, stat, the statistics. But the fact is, is that there's a lot of guys out there who've gotten married and then when they they find out that this woman is not the woman that they thought she was and they divorce her she takes half her stuff and then he has to pay her alimony he has to pay all this other stuff like that that does not go to his child if they have children it goes straight to her pockets and she continues to reap the benefits and she doesn't do anything to contribute because she's living off that there are tons of guys out there that have had that experience there are tons of guys out there that really wanted to be fathers really were good fathers but because of the issue that the mother, the mother didn't want them to be there. The mother was mad at them or hated the guy or the fact that the guy would no longer put up with her crap. She uses the kids as a weapon and she steals the kids. She never pays child support. It's rare that a woman pays child support, even when custody is 50-50. More often than not, if custody is 50-50, the woman is not paying child support to the man when he has custody. And then the man is still paying child support to the woman, like for the entire month, most of the time. That's not fair. In in uh, uh, physical sexual assault cases, if a, like women who are considered sex offenders, they do significantly less time than males who do the exact same crimes. They get women get slaps on the wrist, and and it's also looked at very differently. Like if a, if a woman who's a high school teacher ends up you know messing around with one of her students. Like everyone's gonna look at that boy student like, dude, you were, yeah, buddy, you're a pimp, heck yeah, you're. That's right, bro. I wish I was you, man. Especially if the teacher's beautiful. But let that same scenario be reversed. Let a man fall in that situation. They're like, oh my gosh, you're 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 a pedo and you're this and you're that. How could you? Like, it's always a double standard. It's not okay. And we have all these women out there who are so entitled that they're not willing to serve. And then the biggest argument is, why do I have to submit? Why do I have to submit? Why do women need to submit? Let's talk about that. What is submission? Jesus himself submitted to serve the people in his church. A true leader serves. It's not about letting people be your boss. It's about serving those you lead. When you dance, traditionally the male is supposed to lead. But the fact is he's not dictating your moves. There's a big difference. Like, a lot of women can look at it and say, oh yeah, well, when a man, I'm not letting a man lead me, especially if he don't know how to dance. Well, the fact is, is that if he doesn't know how to dance, you don't want to dance with him, don't dance with him. But when a man is traditionally leading, it's not about dictating. He's asking you in every movement. He's like, I would like to take a journey with this step first. Will you follow me? And then you're allowing yourself to say, I will, I will allow you to lead me. He can't lead you if you won't let him. Each movement is a, is a proposal for your permission to move in a certain direction. And you have to agree to that. No one's forcing you. It's about permission. It's about respect. That's why when you both move together, it's poetry. It's beautiful. It's art. If you're drawing, as a matter of fact, if you're painting, if you're over there using art as your medium, you're painting and your paintbrush is not working with you, your, your picture is not going to come out the right way. There's always going to be problems. If the canvas isn't working the way you want it to, or if the paint is not working the way you want it to, or the brush is not functioning the way you expect it to function, it's just not going to come out the way you really intended it to. 
it's like that with anything. If your car doesn't obey what you're trying to get it to do, like if your alignment's really messed up, it's always going to go to one side or to the other, and you're going to keep fighting against it. But when you're both working together, you're both in sync, you're managing your vehicle, it's going to go straight. Unless you're drunk, then, you know, you're probably going to be doing like zigzagging NASCAR stuff. But the fact is, is that to submit is a show of strength. It's not being the lesser being. You're in tr- that that's why it's so important. Like when you're in a company, you nominate your CEO. Like if you're on the board, you guys nominate the person you believe is going to be the best leader for the company. But nonetheless, the CEO listens to the board. The CEO is the voice of the board and they are the head of the board, but nonetheless, they get advice and counsel from the board members. And if you look at it, a marriage or a relationship is like a business in a lot of ways. You both work on making money to survive. You both want to prosper. You both want to succeed. You both want to improve, assumingly. So when you choose a husband, it's a choice that reflects your ability to choose or make good choices. When you're choosing a husband or partner, it's a reflection of you. If you're stupid, you're probably going to choose a stupid person. But if you're smart, you're more likely to choose a smart individual. And if you get married to a stupid individual, chances are you either he lied to you or you lied to him or you just weren't looking at the right things. That's like hiring somebody based off of how they dress. Like, hey, I, you know what? I love your outfit. Here, come work for me. All of a sudden, this person robs you blind. You find out that the reason why they dress that good is because they were thieves. You need to actually give somebody a chance and get to know them. Really pay attention to the character. You know, don't make it all about sex. Like, I mean, you can go ahead and sleep with people on the first day, the first hour, whatever you want. If that's what you want to do. Go for it. That's you. My suggestion is don't sleep with someone for at least three months. Because for those three months, you'll get an opportunity to see if they're really serious about you or not. I know it's I know it's not easy, especially you get really turned on. You think somebody has an incredible body. You've been wanting that. But the fact is, is that without sex, you're not your mind's not going to be clouded about things that you would not tolerate. Otherwise, there might be certain things or certain aspects that would bother you like crazy that you could not live with. But the sex is so good, something new and having good sex can make that thing that would drive you crazy. Actually, not that not that important. I'm like, it's not that bad. It's cool. But later on, when your relationship is no longer about sex, it's about the character of you and that person, then it's going to drive you crazy. You're like, I can't believe we've been together this long. And oh, my gosh, I hate when you do that. If you wouldn't have had sex, you would have seen that early on. You wouldn't have wasted so many, so much time in your life and energy and, you know, investing with the wrong person. Take your time. Don't be in a rush. If, if that's the right person, they'll be there. And. You know, to to submit to them is a choice. It's once again, it's a it's a show of strength. You are choosing someone you believe will be a good leader. But the thing is is that that person cannot be a great leader without a great partner. There is not a single leader in the history of the world who didn't have good influences around them. Even Jesus, Jesus had the influence of his father. That's why he was always talking to him. So everyone that was, a, that was an exceptional leader in history had someone that was a great, uh, great right arm, you know, or a great partner or a great influence. So if, if you choose a man to lead your household, you were choosing him, you were electing him not to be your dictator, but to be the voice of your family. But the thing, what that entitles is that his voice represents yours as well. Not like politicians when we elect them to take office and then they forget that they work for us and then all of a sudden they want to start taking our rights away and and telling us that we can't have guns and we're not supposed to have guns when they're protected by armed guards you know if something were really that much of a problem they would also enforce it on themselves there's no double standard there but the fact is is that when you have your partner your partner reflects your voice because they take your voice into account they listen to you you're their equal but they are the tone. They are the strength of your home. But the thing is that without a good heartbeat, 
you cannot your, your muscles are worthless because your muscles need the beat of a heart to actually have that strength and my sisters you are the heartbeat you're the the heartbeat of the home you're the most critical part of a home but if you're if you're putting down men because they are not making as much money as you think they should or they're not showering you with gifts like you think you should be showered then you're missing the whole point of what is actually beautiful because if the country fell if the country and all of our electricity and all of our technology fell because of some massive EMP or something and you're looking at the the world right now it's getting crazy if the country fell would you rather have a pretty boy who looks so good on TikTok and is well loved on TikTok, has nice, beautiful manicured nails and knows how to talk and has a gift of gab, but can't use a hammer for crap? Or would you want somebody who would break his back working his butt off in the sun to provide for you? Because a person that will break his back working hard in the sun for you is a person that's going to be the best. That will That person will die for you. And that person has real survival skills, the skills that matter because the gift of gab is not going to get you very far when everybody's suffering. In a recession, when everybody's hurt, fame doesn't mean anything. People don't care about your fame. It's all about how much money do you have? How much do you have something I need? Especially if it goes to a bartering system where money is no longer, you know, valid currency, where it's all about trade. Like, oh, we have whiskey. Okay, I need whiskey. I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you two chickens for, you know, for a gallon of whiskey. Like, it could be that. People think, oh no, it would never be. No, it could be that overnight. If te- our country, or, or excuse me, the world depends so much on technology. Think about how much of your life revolves around your phone. Think about how much of your life revolves around TV and electricity and and like your bank account. When's the last time you've actually used cash? How often do you use cash? Most people would say I use card or I use my phone. So if our technology just got disconnected from us, how much cash do you actually have? And if technology is wasted, then cash essentially has no value. Our life could easily be like that overnight. So if you have the wrong spouse who doesn't know how to work hard, then your life is gonna be a lot harder when something like that happens. And if you got a wife, for you men out there, if you got a wife out there who's one of those entitled, you know, trophy wives that looks gorgeous but is lazier than heck and won't do anything herself, well, when you're in a a survival situation or when you're in a difficult time, she's gonna be the one that kick you when you're down because you're not able to give her the money that she feels she's entitled to. So women, Submitting is not necessarily a bad thing. Letting someone walk all over you is where it gets too far. That's not what a real man wants. A real man does not want a woman who's going to let him walk all over her or net let her walk all over her. Yeah, let him walk all over. Yeah, that's right. Um, a real man is going to want a partner that's going to have have the backbone to say, "Babe, stop being stupid. Wake up." You know that guy's in a bar or, or in a in a restaurant. He wants to fight. A real man wants a woman who's not going to eat him on. Go kick his butt, babe. Go kick his butt. A real man wants a woman who's going to say, babe, stop. I don't want you going to jail. I want you coming home with me. Let's go now. There's no reason to fight. Let him talk. Let's go. That's what a real man wants. A real man wants a woman who's going to have the backbone to pull his head out of his own butt. Because we often do that. We put our own heads up our own butts a lot. But for those women out there who are out there tearing down men, there's a lot of guys out there grouping up and starting to say, you know what? We don't need you. That's the fact. Like, I can provide for myself. And if you want to you wanna be this self-entitled, independent woman, you go ahead and you be that. I'm not going to get married to any woman like that. So a lot of good women are actually going to suffer because they're going to categorize, like men are going to start categorizing all women in that, like in that way. They're going to look at all these women and say, you're all the same. You don't care about anything. You don't want to fight. You don't actually love us. You don't want to be there for the long run. You just want to be there to get some easy, easy benefits. And 
then there's going to be a lot of single women out there who wish they had a good man. Because essentially, if you look at history, look at history, the quality of woman has mirrored the quality of men. When women respected themselves as a, as a whole, women didn't dress very provocative and use their bodies to get what they wanted. When women used their character and their beautiful, gentle femininity, men were gentlemen. Men opened the doors for women. Men treated women with respect and men were willing to wait to have sex. There are always exceptions, of course, but men were willing to show that woman, I will wait for you and I will marry you before I sleep with you because I respect you. I will come talk to your dad. That was the norm for men back in that time. Again, there are always exceptions, but the norm was that standard. Now, you have all these women like Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, and all these women after talking about, you don't need a man, F that dude, take his money, you know, sleep with as many guys as you want. But they're not actually living that. They're not living what they're, what they're saying, but a lot of women are out there listening to their stuff and living what they're saying. They're living those lyrics like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm a F a bunch of dudes. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna sleep with anyone I want. You know, I'm gonna take men's money. I don't care about that. And they're alone. Meanwhile, Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, and a lot of other rappers that are saying that same stuff are in stable relationships. And you guarantee they are not doing that because no man would put up with that. No man is gonna put up with a woman who is just gonna, you know, be out this money and not do anything to contribute. You better believe we, there's even a video where, like Cardi B actually had a song where she's like, I don't even clean up. I, I won't clean up. And then her dude actually filmed her and he, she started laughing. She's like, what happened? Didn't you say you don't clean up? And she was using a broom to sweep up. And she's like, oh my gosh. But the fact is that when they're at home, they are a different person. What you see in the music videos and stuff like that in the lyrics, that's a character. Little John, the, the rapper, he doesn't talk like, yeah, yeah. He doesn't talk like that. He's very intelligent. Um, and a lot of other celebrities, they're just putting on characters. These are all characters for people to see because that's the, the person they have to pretend to be. So if you really think about it, these women are not living what they're saying, which means it's not that good. If women really want to stop being seen as objects, and this is coming from a man, there, there are going to be women out there who are going to strongly disagree, and that's cool. You have that right. You have a voice, and your voice is equal to mine. I'm not saying my voice is stronger or more important than yours. What, what I'm saying is if you want a man to respect you, there's no way that's going to happen if all that he sees on your social media pages are paid, or, or like pictures of you in bikinis. If you're just like, if your butt's sticking out in every one of your pictures, your bikinis all out and stuff like that, and you use your body to get attention and fame, if that's what you do, no honorable good man is going to respect you and say, I'm gonna take her home to mom. They're not thinking like that because you are presenting yourself to them. Now, this might not be your intention, but there's this thing called subliminal communication. If you walk out and you have like like you present yourself on all your social media on on your ig on facebook uh, linkedin whatever the case may be wherever you may be using social media if you have all these very provocative uh, uh pictures of yourself and you present those the person is going to see you as a sexualized being they're not going to see you as wifey material and what happens if, if you've got pictures like that all over your social media and you get in a real relationship that dude might like it any guys that get you they might like it like when they first meet you and if you're lucky that they actually stay in a relationship with you one of the first things they're going to say is how come you still got that stuff up like who else are you trying to get their eyes like you should take that stuff down why because he's starting to respect you but that's an exception but the norm is that no guy is going to look at a woman like that and think i want to make her my wife and and you know, make her honorable and really be there for her. Nah, they're not thinking like that. They're thinking, I just want to hit that. And if, if you're a good screw, then they're going to want to hit you, like hit it often. But they're not thinking about actually being with you because they're not taking you serious. They just like what you have between your legs. Who wants that? Like it might be nice now, like while you get the benefits, but 
Do you really want to be 40 years old by yourself when you finally realize, ah, oh, crap, what have I done with my life? It's the same exact concept for men walking out there with all their jewelry on and stuff like that. Because I see a lot of these dudes, and I'm, I'm just going to be honest. I call it like I see it. That's why my, my podcast is called Real Talk with RJ. I call it like I see it. I'm honest. I'm straight forward, and I'm blunt. The fact is, a lot of these dudes that walk out there with all this jewelry on and stuff like that, they're ugly. <laughs> they got the most ugly faces, and like they're they're so out of shape, and they don't have anything going for themselves but a couple like rap records or whatever, and got some money. So to compensate for how ugly their face looks, they put all this jewelry on, and they get the attention of gold diggers. So when you're putting all that jewelry and stuff like that out you are subliminally communicating to gold diggers or to other women that I got lots of money. I got cash. You know, I, I make bread, you know, independence, uh, financial stability. I got that. But the reality is a lot of guys that have that stuff, they, ain't, they don't have as much money as you think. They're trying to play the role. They're, they're pretending to be financially stable when they're not. A lot of rappers come into the game. They tell them, look, don't blow all your money, man, because this this there's a lot of rappers out there. Calm down. Just manage your money wisely. Same thing with NBA players, NBA players, NFL players, people in professional leagues. A lot of times they come in, they tell them, look, manage your money wisely because and, and don't buy your house. Just lease your house. You know, make your money the right way. But don't buy your house because, you know, the, the football club or or the sports team can actually trade you in the blink of an eye, or you could be injured and your contract is null and void. They tell a lot of students, don't be so quick to get into the draft. Finish your degree. You got a full ride scholarship, get your degree, because if you get injured, then you don't have a professional career. And then you don't have a, an academic achievement either. So the thing is, I said all I have to say is that the quality of man is a definite reflection of the quality of woman. So ladies, if you want men to be better, if you want men to respect you, you have to respect yourself. And showing your titties to everybody is not doing that. You're not going to let everyone, and I've said this before on a previous podcast, if you had a brand new $2 million Bugatti, if you had a $2 million Bugatti car, would you let a dude drive your car just because he's sexy? You'd be like, heck no, you wouldn't let a dude drive your car just because he's sexy. You let him ride in it because you want to showboat him, but you would not let him drive it. You're not going to risk him damaging or destroying that car. Well, sweetheart, aren't you worth more than that Bugatti? The Bugatti is, is replaceable. You're not. You're one of a kind. So somebody should be worthy of seeing your beautiful, sacred body before you reveal it to them. Don't just send them a picture of your body just because they asked for it. How many women out there have gotten their pictures put up online on, on porn pages, porn sites? After being with somebody and the guy wanted to respond by because he was mad, he's like, I'm gonna put her, I'm gonna put all her pictures she sent me on uh on these sites just out of revenge. I'm gonna smut her up. Well, if you never take pictures, especially pictures of your of your face with your body exposed, you never have to worry about that. And also, like, rather than send pictures of your body to somebody, I know it's sexy. And I, I mean, I'm not complaining, saying like, oh, man, I would never want my wife to do it. I mean, if, if it's your wife, like, it's one thing. It's, it's nice. It's a nice little surprise to open up your phone and then boom. You know, you got, you got a pair of beautiful... Uh, beautiful breasts looking you in the face like that's that's a nice thing you know i'm not complaining but i'm saying don't just do that to just some dude just because he's cute or don't do that to someone for some money because no matter how much money they pay you to show your body it's never enough for what you're truly worth males and females don't settle don't let somebody pay you to humiliate yourself there's no amount of money that's worthy of your dignity. Don't do it. You're seeing tons of people on social media, on, on YouTube especially, YouTube and TikTok, who are creating these stupid, idiotic videos just to get some views. 
guys who were going over there and slapping their girlfriends or hitting them in the face with tortillas or humiliating them just for some views. I would never do that to my fiance because she's not my girlfriend. She's not my buddy. She's a woman I highly respect and insanely love. So women, men are not going to improve until you start fighting for us too. We need you to fight for actual equality, not superiority. There's a reason why women have been attacked more than men. Because we don't have transgender women, uh, biological women transgendering into men, competing in sports with other men and dominating. That's not happening at all. But the fact is, is that what is happening is there are men who can't cut it with other biological men. So they want to identify all of a sudden as women without having the full, you know, the full uh, surgery. They just want to identify as women so they can compete against women and destroy them so that they can actually have a trophy because they can't get it with their own sex. And then even in a split tie, there was an incident where a woman had a dead on tie with this with a swimmer, but they gave the transgender woman the trophy rather than and they said they were going to mail the trophy to the woman. They didn't even let the woman take the picture. Women are being erased. They're no longer calling you women. They're calling you baby carriers or um, uh, menstrual makers and all this other stuff like that. They're calling you all these different names rather than what you are. Women, you are so important to society. You are the reason we do or do not go to war. If you keep downing us, we're going to fight back and we're not going to have the guidance we need. Women, you lead us a lot more than you think. You are so critical to the health of society. And I apologize for my tone, but I'm frustrated because I'm seeing so many beautiful women out there degrading themselves for views. They don't know how amazing they are. You are priceless. There will never be another human being like you in the history of the world. You are rarer than the most rare work of art. The Mona Lisa is not as priceless as you are. So when women start demanding that men respect them by clothing themselves, by showing that respect and making sure a man is worthy of them before they have sex, men are not going to start respecting you. Men are going to start treating women like, like pieces of meat because it's going to be a response to how you are telling us you want to be treated. Don't fall for this feminist nonsense that if people are growing up and saying, oh, well, women are, are paid significantly less. No, if you look at the population of, of, of workforce, that's not true. They're, pick, they're, they're cherry picking statistics and saying, oh, well, women are paid less. Look at the WNBA. Have you ever been to a WNBA game? Have you ever seen the, the price for tickets? Go to any WNBA game out there. For those who believe that the WNBA should be uh, paid equally to the NBA, go to one of those games. Look at how empty the stadium is. I looked at the, the Los Angeles Sparks tickets for courtside. It was like 500 and something dollars for courtside. On any game, like a normal game, like if the Lakers were to play against the, like the sorriest team in the NBA, <laughs> The tickets for courtside would still be like eleven to fourteen thousand dollars a seat, and on any game, even the crappiest games, they're very packed. Not sold out all the time, but they're very packed, and they use the entire stadium. But for the WNBA, they close off a lot of the seats just so that the stadium looks more more packed. There's like two like two levels that they're actually using. It's very very small. They don't put on a show like the, the NBA does. That's just a reality. Now, in the WWE, like, you know, uh, professional wrestling, yeah, the women are dominating that sport. So I believe that a lot of the women in there should be getting paid equally for, for the fan base to bring it in. But basically, I'm not saying that one sex should get paid better than the other. I'm saying that you should get paid equally 
for what you're contributing. You're not going to pay somebody more if they're bringing in less business. That's just not smart business. So, women, I we need you to stand up for us. There's a reason why every NFL player out there, when they when they say when they finally make it or they make that trophy or in college or whatever, they always say, "Hi, mom. I hope you're proud of me, mom. I love you, mom." Mother's Day is the most celebrated day out there. But one of the reasons why Father's Day is not celebrated as much is because fathers aren't there for their kids as they used to be. But ladies, you guys are the tone. That's why I said you're the heartbeat of the home. You set the tone of peace. When someone comes over to a man's home, his wife should be the tone of peace in that in that home. If she's always nagging, she's always complaining about every little thing, and she's not working with him, and she's lazy, he looks like an idiot. And the same goes vice versa. If the man is a piece of garbage and he's not providing, he's not doing his part, and the woman brings guests over, she's going to look stupid. It's the same thing. That's why it's so important. Ladies, you're not the lesser beings. You are equal to us, but we need you to help make us great leaders. We cannot become great leaders without your guidance. I heard a woman that's been married for like almost 50 years. She told me that her husband is the head of the household, but she's the neck that holds that head up. And I was like, I love that. So I'm pleading with you. Stop using your bodies to get men's attention because the men that pay attention to that are not worthy of you. You're so much more than a pair of tits in a, in, in a vagina. And man, you're so much more than a, a pair of change how much money you make. Men, we need to stick up for the good woman. Start opening those doors. If your hands are empty, open, in, open a door for a lady. If she gets mad at her, let that be her fault. Let that be between her and her God or whoever she worships or whatever. But you do what's right. Be a gentleman. Because I'm telling you, a lot of women are going to start or start to wake up right now. And a lot of men are starting to wake up. People are getting tired of settling for someone who doesn't deserve them. I'm calling out to more women worldwide. I got some listeners in, in Ireland. I love you guys. You guys are so loyal and I'm so thankful for you. Man, I... I Thank you for those listeners in the United States. Thank you. I love you all. I'm grateful for everyone worldwide. This podcast has reached different parts of the world, and I'm so grateful for it. But I, I need you guys. We need you. Our species in humanity needs each other. Ladies, demand respect for yourself. Pay attention to the things you put online because your kids are going to see those things one day. And if it's out there, it's out there. If you have an OnlyFans, if that's how you want to make money, I'm not here to judge you. If you have, if you make money doing porn or anything else, I'm not here to judge you. But I'm here to tell you a wake-up call. If you're like, maybe one day you might want to run for office. You might want to run to change something you don't like. That's going to come back up. And that might actually be the thing that stops you from succeeding. Maybe somebody wants you to be the, the leader of the parent-teacher association or whatever the case may be. If that picture comes up, they're not going to have you there. The most beautiful thing about you, ladies, is not what you have under your clothes. It's what you have in your heart. It's your character. That's what makes a man fall in love. That's what makes a man respect you. And if you are willing to teach us who you are without a sense of entitlement, without thinking that we're less than you or or better than you but if you're willing to treat us as an equal and you're willing to submit do service and lead, help us lead we're going to become great men and many more women are going to be happy with the result but if women are continually putting down men and feeling like they're the prize and that men are are just lucky to have them there's going to be a lot of broken hearts out there. And there's going to be a lot of women who have kids out of wedlock that from deadbeat dads that want nothing to do with their kids. 
Again, ladies, we're calling out to you. We're pleading with you. Please save manhood. Because we really depend on you. If you put 15 guys on an island with one woman, those 15 guys are all going to compete. I don't care how physically beautiful or physically ugly she is. Those 15 men are going to compete for that woman's heart. And they're going to do whatever it takes to get her heart. If she's looking for someone who's sensitive and nice and gentle, those guys are going to start being nice and gentle and sensitive to her. They're going to do whatever it takes to get her heart. So that's what I'm saying. We're not going to keep settling to, you know, for these entitled women, knowing that there are good women out there. But we're asking you women to wake those other women up and help them see that we need more good women out there and more good women demanding respect for themselves is going to result in more men taking women seriously and more men respecting women more men being men again I, I mean that I've always been raised as a gentleman I used to be a womanizer but it took one woman to help me love myself and from that point on I started to respect women but it was because of her it was because she took the time to teach me to love myself. And that's what helped me. And for that, my fiance is a very happy woman. I love her so much. I mean that she's just an incredible woman. She makes me dinners. I provide for her. She provides for me. We are partners all the way down. I'm so grateful for that. Does anybody that's listening, does anybody have anything they'd like to share? Any input? Christine. All right, we have Christine joining us. I really appreciate somebody being willing to talk to. It really means a lot to me. Hi, Christine. Hello. Hello. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. And yourself? I'm doing good. I was listening to your talk. Thank you. My Thank pleasure. you for what you're saying. Um, you know, me and my significant other, we met online. And uh, I was talking to uh, Chris Wilson about this not too long ago. But, you know, when I was getting ready to get back into the dating scene, and uh, I was looking online and putting myself out there, the only thing I wrote in my description was no drama. <laughs> That's a good I requirement. I had two guys come up. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, just no drama. I had two guys come up, and uh, I met Scott. And uh, I told Scott, I was like, look, um, I'm no nonsense. I was like thinking to myself, you know, this guy's going to last two weeks, right? <laughs> and we're going on our seventh year. Oh, congrats. Yeah, because we've given each other the equal respect. That's a key word right there. Respect. Uh, mm -hmm. respect. Respect. I respect him as a man. He respects me as a woman. He respects what I do. I respect what he does. You know? uh, on top of that, I don't know if you've heard any of my um, talks, but I'm also a, uh, I, I own Amarillo Tornado Hunters. Oh, nice. It's a, uh, yeah. It's a storm chasing um, community group. Uh, I don't make any money doing it. It's all volunteer. And I have 12 guys underneath me. Uh, but I don't treat them as if they're underneath me. They are with me. Um, because in that aspect of it, if I'm not working with them and we're not working together, somebody's going to lose their life. Yeah. You know, and I've said that over and over again. So I think it's great what you're talking about. Like, absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. That really means a lot to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love your concept no, you of, of believing that uh, that they don't work for you or under you. They work with you. That's that's a sign of a true leader. Yeah, well, I didn't I don't want to be a boss. I don't want to be a boss. And I told them that when they started on with me um, 12 years. Uh, well, see, we're on our 11th year now with Amarillo Tornado Hunters. I think it's our 11th year. I It was founded in 2009. So, okay. I mean, it's been going for a while. 
But I told him, I'm not your boss. You know, I'm somebody here who facilitates a place for y'all to go to show what you do, to show your love for storms, to show your passion for helping other people. And, and that's what it is. But I, I'm not their boss. You're their team leader, which is a great thing. It's uh, a big difference. Leader. It's a it's a big difference to have a team leader versus a boss because boss is more of a dictator. You know, it's somebody that do do as I say, don't worry about anything else. But a team leader is somebody that leads a team and it actually identifies the quality of leadership rather than the power of leadership. You know what I mean? Right, right. Because by doing that, um, there's not that battle. You know, that battle you talked about, who's better than who? Mm hmm. Ain't nobody better than nobody. We all put our pants on one leg at a time. Yep. So true. You know, I've, I've had, I've worked with many, many different people from different backgrounds. But one thing that I always hated seeing, I hated to see a female leader or a male leader or a gay leader or a Baptist leader or a straight leader. I don't care about their background. I just want to see a leader. I don't want to see somebody, I don't want to see the, the skin color or sex first before I see the leadership. I want to see the leader who just so happens to be a woman or just so happens to be a male. That is what leadership should be defined as. And that seems very much like that's your concept of leadership. Right, well, you know, and leadership comes with how you treat people, mm -hmm. right? It's because that's your first impression. So, you know, if I got on here and I did battle with you and argued with you, I'm leaving you a first impression on who I am. Yeah. Especially in a volunteer force. You got a volunteer army with you. That's pretty cool. That shows that yeah. you're very respectable. I, I love my guys. I mean, they're, I got their back. They got my back. Uh, you know, we'll cut up with one another. Like, we're a family. We're a family. Oh. Man, that, that's how it's supposed to be. And I really appreciate that. It's You're definitely supposed to be a family. Like anybody that anybody that works with you is supposed to feel like they're working with a family rather than working for somebody or working for dictatorship or like because like I've learned in the military that if people respect you, they will run into a barrage of bullets with you or for you but if they fear you they're not going to go above and beyond they're just going to do their job just because you're getting paid to do their job or they fear retaliation right, right. Oh, that's what it hit me with what you were talking about like that just really resonated with me so yeah i had to get up here and say something i had to say something well i'm very grateful for you thank you so much for for being willing to open up and being willing to talk and thank you for your feedback, especially your testimonial about how long you and your, your significant other have been together because like, you know, you just don't see people together that long anymore. It's sad. Like this used to be the, the low end of the norm back in the day. Now it's, it's the high end of the norm. And it's, it's sad. People just don't want to stay married anymore. They don't want to fight for something. They don't want to sacrifice. You got people that are in marriages now thinking, Oh, well, he needs to change for me or she needs to change for me rather than let's meet each other in the middle. We have a disagreement. Let's find our way through it and let's meet each other in the, in the middle ground. They're not trying to negotiate yeah. or find solutions. Yeah. And you know, and before Scott, I was married for 17 years and uh, my ex, we got a divorce. Uh, we were, it was mutual. Uh, there was no battle there. We just weren't working out. And uh, I think one of the reasons he decided it to go that way, and I haven't told anybody this on here, but uh, this past year he passed away from th um, neck and head cancer. Oh, I'm and sorry I had no that. idea. Yeah, it was uh, a heartbreaking thing. Cause he, I mean, he's, we bought a son and uh, my son's now 20 years old, but so I, I've got, I know what it means to have longevity in a relationship my mom and dad have been married for oh my gosh i think 50 something years wow 
And so we grew up with that. And I told Scott, I was like, I'm in this for the long haul, buddy. So I hope you are too. And he's like, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> That's right. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> These yeah. days, people are just like, they're getting married with already planning for divorce. I'm like, what's the point of getting married if you're already planning your demise? <laughs> you're supposed to be in this for the long run. You're not supposed to think about the D word. out the door already yeah you know? and, and if you decide that if somebody that's not gonna work like sit down talk about it let them know like hey this ain't working yeah ain't no reason to go through all that and sometimes it's okay so just because you're two... military yes i'm a vet you're a vet okay. scott is too yeah. oh really we're branch yeah he sure is uh he's in the army Okay. Uh, he was infantry. Nice. You got a man that can yeah. fight, defend, yeah. shoot, all that stuff. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Tornado yeah, gets too close. Down. He'll just sit there and he'll get him outside and be like, Mm-mm. don't even think about coming on this <laughs> lawn. I just mowed the lawn. <laughs> yeah. And the tornado would be like, just move around your house. <laughs> That's, yeah, just go right on by. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's funny. <laughs> I can see, I can see Scott just like running down the street after the tornado. Like that's not what we mean by storm chasing, honey. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You know, I give him props though because I told him I was like, regardless of what I do, like you guys, y'all got my respect. You got my respect, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you My guys. My dad was a military. He was Air Force and uh, he wasn't active duty, but like he said, it's rough. It's rough going through that. Rough. He said, so anybody you run into that's military, you treat them with respect because they earned it. Thank you so much. Y'all earned it. We definitely, we definitely don't have like you would think that we, as vets, we actually have the same rights everyone else does, but when we put on the uniform, we give up a lot of our freedoms because we just can't have certain freedoms that we're fighting for. Like, we can't have free speech. We're not allowed to. We, like, if we don't like the president, we can't say it. We just have to say, the president is my commander-in-chief, and I have sworn to defend him and support him and obey all of his orders, and, you know, we we'll leave it at that. You can't say anything else other than that. Otherwise, it's a disrespect toward the president of the United States and you get arrested and you get in a lot of trouble for it. So, yeah, but it, it was definitely worth the sacrifice. It was worth the opportunity to help defend other people, you know, and right. and allow them to have the freedoms that our brothers and sisters before us and our founding fathers have fought to allow us to have, which lots yeah. of organizations are trying to break down right now apparently it's 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 just coming from all over we got the family unit that's being attacked so that you know the platonic fa or excuse me the nuclear family is now being destroyed uh the identity of women is being destroyed the identity in purpose of men is being destroyed freedoms of speech are being destroyed so now you're super micromanaged on what you can and can't say on social media if somebody gets offended by what you say and they report it as bullying, even though you're not bullying, you're just trying to tell them, give them some advice like, hey, you know, I, I'm very, very experienced in this industry. Um, if you're doing it this way, it's not going to work. It doesn't sound as good. I think you should, if you're open to suggestions, maybe you should do this. Then they report it and then like, oh, you're bullying. What the heck? Whatever happened to positive or critical feedback? <laughs> now people are just super sensitive. Take something from it, you know. That's yeah. how I see it. If, if I know. You, if you go ahead, I'm sorry. If you, if you tell me something like, oh, I don't know, storm chasing is crazy. Uh, okay, I respect the fact that you think storm chasing is crazy because honestly, I do too. <laughs> um, but you know, I learned something from that. Like, what, what, what reason would you think it's crazy? Like, why do you think that? You know. I mean, I mean, that's a very minor example, but um, so 
sometimes you need that criticism to learn from it. Yeah. I, I know in the Bible, uh, there was a time where in the Old Testament, there was a man named Balaam and God used his donkey to actually start talking to tell him, you know, to speak up. So I'm a firm believer. Like I have this little saying that God can speak truth through the mouth of a hypocrite because he used a donkey. So why wouldn't he use a hypocrite? So if people are willing to listen, and that's that's for people who aren't even religious as well. If it, like you can hear truth from the mouth of a hypocrite. You can hear truth from the mouth of a crackhead. Like it doesn't matter if you're willing to listen for truth. Truth can come from any source, but it's still true. Yeah, that, that's that's great. That's amazing. I love that. But you're you're right. He did use the donkey. He did. I really appreciate you coming on, Christine. Christine Marie. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be listening to some more. So it was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you. Okay, You're definitely you a blessing. A, oh, oh, you are too. You are too. And thank you for everything you've done. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Have a nice day. You as well. Bye-bye. Bye. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to contribute as well before we bring this to a close? Because I'm, I'm definitely interested in hearing the, the opinions of you as well. I love, I love learning things I don't know. I love hearing feedback about the things that I'm saying because... As I always say, I don't know everything, but I know a lot about a number of things because I ask a lot of questions. And I know there's lots of people on here that can possibly teach me things that I, I have overlooked or things of which I'm not aware at this point. My single purpose in life is to improve and to help others improve around me. Not from the perspective of looking down at people, but you know, reaching down and grabbing their hands to to rise with me. I don't I don't want to rise ahead of people. I want to rise with them. I believe that using this platform to help build those around me is the right use of this platform. And that's the whole purpose of why I want to do it. I want to help. I want to serve. One more time to anybody else who's willing to to share, who's willing to open the the floor is open. I would love to hear from you, hear your feedback, hear your opinions, or hear some things that you took from this discussion. And um, yeah, I would love to hear from you. Feel free to reach out. You don't ever have to wait for me to to stop talking because, you know, since it is a podcast, that it gets really awkward with the awkward silence. I should put like the Jeopardy music on here or something. Just to- do, 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 do. Then someone comes in like, hello and welcome to Real Talk with RJ. <laughs> just started just making it like some type of game show. But anyway, I'm just really grateful that you all took the time to, to listen today. And for those who are going to hear this podcast later on, you know, I, I think of each one of you. You're not a group of people to me. You're a group of individuals and each individual relationship is what I treasure most. I looked at the stats of everyone who's listening um, worldwide to my podcast, and it's just, it's a blessing. And again, if there's anything you haven't taken from this is ladies, ladies, you guys are so priceless. That's why God gave you the gift, the godly gift of creating life. You are the key to the balance of society. If we don't have strong women, I'm not talking about those entitled independent bosses that think that they don't need anyone. I'm talking about women who are willing to help men become better through service, through love, and through that example. If we don't have you, society falls. Please fight back. We need you. I can't sit there and act like I'm the president of men. I'm not, I don't speak for all men, but I know I speak for myself. And I don't know, I know there's lots of men out there who have the same opinion that I do. We need you women. We need you to clothe yourselves because you were the first gift God gave to man. The very first gift after he gave life was a woman because that was a solution. The first solution to his first problem. 
He said it's not good that man should be alone. And for this cause shall a man leave his mother and his wife, or his mother and his father, and shall cleave unto his wife. And the two shall be one. Those are his words. The very first problem God had was that man was alone. So he created the solution. The first solution was woman. You were the first gift to man. Nobody likes someone to give them the gift that's just open in here. Here's a, here's a, you know, a gift card that's just completely open. People want the, the enjoyment of unwrapping their gift. Since your gifts, clothe yourselves. Demand that man pay attention to your character, your intelligence, your wittiness, your work ethic, your, your personality, all that is actually you. Because I'm telling you, if you use your boobs and your vagina to get what you want, what happens when you get in a car accident? Or what happens if you get burnt? Or what happens if something happens to, like what happens if you get breast cancer? My mom's a breast cancer survivor and I know from what she's told me just how detrimental it can be to have a mastectomy. She used to tell me that she felt like she was less of a woman because she didn't have her breast. I can't even imagine how that must feel with some with women going through that. But nonetheless, it could happen. And if you made a living using your breasts and your vagina, what happens after you lose that? That living's gone, you have no skills, and nobody knows the blessing that is you. I'm not trying to put all the pressure on the women. I'm not trying to do that. But without a good foundation, it doesn't matter how beautiful the house is. Ladies, you're the foundation. You're the foundation of society. You're the strength of society because men get their strength from you. Whether men are straight or gay, they get their, their motherhood, motherly love, sisterly love. That type of love can only come from women. And it's the strongest love capable. So please respect yourselves and demand that we respect you so that my brothers become men again and we find our way back to who we were created to be. We need you. And men, we need to get back to our roots. We need to become men again. I'm not talking about the toxic dictator masculinity. I'm talking about real men who love, protect, serve, and honor their women. Whether that's your mother, your sister, your brother, we need to stop putting our, our parents in retirement homes. You know, we're like some of the only cultures in, like in the world, Asian cultures, Middle Eastern cultures, Jewish cultures, Italian cultures. They don't put their parents in, in homes. They respect them and, and the parents live with them because your parents didn't put you in a home for the most part, unless you were adopted or, you know, put in an orphanage or whatnot. But the average parent actually raised you. They sacrificed sleep for you. They wiped your butt when you pooped on yourself. Why can't we do that in return for them? I think that's something we also need to work on as a society. Is put those retirement homes out of business and start bringing our mothers and our fathers with us. Just like they did with us. So, again, I just want to thank you all for taking the time to listen to me. Thank you for spending this time with me. Thank you for lending an ear. Thank you, Christine Marie, for for your feedback and your your offers of advice and sharing your story with us and i love each one of you guys with all my heart i mean that i'm i sincerely am thankful for each one of you and i hope you have a great day i hope you have a great evening whenever you listen to this later on i am thankful for each one of you and i'm so grateful that i have this opportunity to be able to speak with you and i hope you have a beautiful life going forward i hope that this talk made your day better and helped make you a better person because i learned I often learn when I'm talking. I learn from like inspired words that God says to me. I, I improve myself. So I, I don't improve myself. I improve as well personally. But having said that, you're all very special. Never settle and never let anybody pay you to demean yourself. There's no price for your dignity. There's no price equal to the value of who you really are. And nobody will ever see you who, for who you are unless you demand that they see you for who you are. With confidence, dignity, humility, 
and self-respect. If you respect yourself and you respect your partner as an equal, this world's going to start balancing out the way it's supposed to, rather than leaning to one side or leaning to the other and being warped and changing every five seconds. That's all I have. If there's nobody else that has anything to share, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for spending time with me on Real Talk with RJ. Don't forget to listen to my podcast, Real Talk with RJ, available anywhere podcasts are available. And don't forget to check out my book, Soul Guardian by RJ Kurtz, available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and anywhere. Actually, it's like lots of different places. If you just look up RJ, the letter R, the letter J, space, and Kurtz, K-U-R-T-Z, that's my author pseudonym. You can find the book there. And it's a vampire book, very unique, and it's it's awesome. Not just because I wrote it, but because it really is. It's pretty cool. So go check it out. Enjoy it. My podcast, Real Talk with RJ, has lots of other different subjects and lots of different talks, and there's a lot of great stuff there. So share this with everyone you know. Find my podcast, follow it, like it, subscribe to it, and continue to give me feedback. Ask me questions if you want. I'm open. I love answering questions. I love helping you can message me and I'll definitely message you back at, you know, at the earliest time I have and continue out there. If you have an email that you'd like to send me emails or ask me questions or give me, you know, ideas for different talks, my email is ross.curtis723 at gmail.com. Again, that is R-O-S-S period C-U-R-T-I-S 723 at gmail.com. Thank you very much for spending real, spending time with me on Real Talk with RJ. Signing out.